So who am I? Um, I ask myself every morning, who am I? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm Atina. Some of you know me. Some of you have not seen me before. I work since uh, a couple of years for OGC. And I work in the field of GIS since over 20 years. Um, yeah, I've been 10 years working for in the private industry, and since 2009, I'm OGC's director for regional services for Europe, Central Asia, and Africa. This means I'm connecting with people, um, I'm bringing people together. It's a lot about networking, it's about, a lot about informing what we are doing in OGC. I reach out to stakeholders. And um, we have alliance partners, so I also work partly with uh, alliance partners. And yeah, I'm, I'm here also because I'm a charter member of OSGEO since uh, 2008. And uh, to, to, to give you a little bit of an idea why, you know, why OGC and OSGEO has a co uh, cooperation, we have a memorandum of understanding. Here are, um, in one slide, uh, the roots of OGC. And who of you has seen Judy Garnett's presentation? Yeah, excellent. So um, I think he, pre he presented very, very well uh, the history um, and the story about both organizations. So in 2008, um, OGC and OSGEO decided that they need to, or there, there is a need and the wish from the community to collaborate. And we identified a lot of uh, uh, common areas of work between the two organizations. So this is changing over time. Um, of course, OGC standards are an important role because um, the OSGO community are implementing that. So we get a lot of feedback from, from the OSGO community, the Phosphor G community. Open API is a topic of common interest and team engine. And uh, Dirk Stenger, are you here? Yeah, so we have uh, one of the guys behind Team Engine sitting here, and um, Stefan as well as uh, Angelos and Tom, they will also talk about in more detail about those uh, topics of collaboration. So the Phosphor G community developed and contributed to num numerous uh, reference implementations, and you will also hear about that later. So all these led in 2008 to a memorandum of understanding, and there is a link um, where we, you can find the memorandum of understanding. It's in the OSGEO wiki. And just to give you an idea, one part of the MOU is that we from OGC provide six slots for individuals from the OSGEO community to participate in the OGC process and report back to the OSGEO community. So it's really um, a, a process that is behind that. And if you're interested to, to, uh, to learn more about that, either talk to me or Bruce Bannerman on the OSGEO uh, site because he's uh, leading the process there. Good. We are all living in exciting times. Um, there's new technology, new gadgets to play around with, um, you know, drones, just to name a few, wearables, wearable devices, and many more things. So I think it's a nice playground for uh, adults that never really grow, grew up. So there's also abundance of data, um, not only from the EO community, but all the sensors that are out there, they're collecting a lot of data. So and you see the trend is, um, is really going up. And the abundance of devices that comes with the new technology, I just say Internet of Things, so there's more and more out there. Um, before, also, you know, we had just one computer with us, if at all a laptop. Um, now you have your mobile phone, you have your it's a smartphone, you have a tablet, and uh, what else? So there's a lot of technology going out. Um, um, available, and um, the question is how do we use all these devices and the information we are gathering um, to address the challenges we have? And some of the challenges are, of course, a very pressing one is food security, and in recent years um, that topic has really come up, it has become very important because it's a critical issue, um, droughts, 
we need drought monitoring, we see more and more uh, extreme weather um, events. So these are challenges, these are, they have an effect on the, co um, on the society, on, on humankind. And um, yeah, the question is, what can we as a community that is addressing uh, or dealing or working with local uh, location information, um, what can we do to, to, to support or to help addressing these challenges? Um, yeah, interoperability is one aspect. So on the one side, we have the human systems, we have the natural systems, and then we have the physical infrastructure systems. And the question is, how do we bring those together? And um, open spatial IT standards is one way and a critical requirement to bring all the data together and to understand and manage the amount of data um, and that is produced or inherent in these systems. So when I talk about interoperability, you know, a lot, lot of topics, workflows, uh, data, products, and just to visualize it a little bit, and I'm not going in detail and all that what, what I will show you, it's just to give you an idea about what we are talking. So before it's just you know one sensor, a browser, and a user using the data that came out of the that comes out of the sensor. More sensors require additional um, devices or a, 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 an additional process. So it's the a device registry. Then you add data services. You have an event feed. You need um, to check on on, on ground uh, truth. You, we do a lot of analytics. So and. There is data science, a very actual topic. Uh, again, more analytics, ontologies. So the system grows more complex. Automation tools, digitization, government governance. So it's growing bigger and bigger. And of course, security um, is, a, is a topic. And all these balls you see, all these, not all these um, um, circles you see, it's, uh, you know, um, they require to, to communicate with each other, so it's all about interoperability. Software as a service application, edge services, machine learning, um, smart contracting, everything, and we need to handle that. So, and uh, how, how do we do that? And this is, well, how open standards come into play. And um, we at OTC were passionate to bring people together um, that talk about um, the challenges that address the requirements from, from, from different communities and um, yeah, make location information available uh, to everyone. And I think uh, one aspect is, you know, um, we need to, to leave a better world for our kids and for future generations. And thus uh, bringing together and connect communi communities, technologies and decision making um, is very important to create a sustainable environment and sustainable future um, for all of us. And uh, interoperability and the use of open standards is critical to use, share, access, reuse um, information and data uh, that come out of all, comes out of all the sensors. In OGC, and that's the bottom point, we have processes um, that are addressing, of course, standardization and innovation. And I will talk today, you know, give you an insight into um, our programs. And as said, uh, the speakers after me, um, they will go into more detail um, with some more technical aspects of our programs. So. These are the main programs in OGC. We have an innovation program, standards program, connected to the compliance program, and communication outreach or marketing and, as communica and communication as we call it now. And looking into detail, so the standards program, this is of course where the standards are developed, and the, it's connected very closely to the compliance program because if you have uh, the, the OTC standards can be implemented into software and then you can test the software and say, okay, if you pass the test, I'm OTC compliant. So it's about product implementation. Um, the OTC standards program 
has different kind of working groups. On the one side, there are the domain working groups, and we are addressing, you know, a whole plethora of uh, topics, starting from agriculture, aviation, 3D, information management, uh, citizen science, big data, uh, earth observation exploitation platforms, um, land administration, uh, just, of course, spatial data on the web, marine SDIs, and all those domain working groups they are, um, the mailing list that we have, they are open for non-members. So if you're interested to get an understanding what we are discussing in this working groups, please let me know. Um, I can help you uh, to, to participate in, in, in these domain working groups. So the standards working groups are for members only, and this is where the standards are developed. This is where the work on candidate standards takes place. Prior to the approval, they make revisions uh, to existing standards. So this is, um, we, we will see some, some of the discussions that are currently happening there um, in, in the presentation from Tom and um, Angelos. So in, in the last one and a half years, so we started, or maybe two years, we started to do a lot of the developments um, on GitHub. And this makes it also more accessible for non-members. So um, we opened up um, our processes a little bit, and that is also due to the collaboration and cooperation with, with the OSGEO community. So remember um, the standards program. This is where the standards are developed. Um, implementations, the standards can be implemented into software, and this is in very short only one slide about the compliance program, and Dirk uh, has a presentation tomorrow about Team Engine, that is the software that is behind uh, the compliance testing, so, and if you have any questions, by the way, um, we are here a team, so please uh, ask uh, questions right now. We want to make it more um, interactive. Good. We covered very short, and I, I could talk, you know, for hours about what we are doing in more detail. Um, but in very short, that's a standards and compliance program. Now we are looking at the innovation program. That's where prototype implementation takes place. It's um, the results of it are engineering reports. The innovation program is addressing real-world scenarios. And the idea is to have an, um, an agile development environment where we can rapidly develop, test, validate, and demonstrate the use of new standards in real-world uh, use cases. So we have sponsors, they have a requirement on interoperability. Remember the challenges ahead that are coming. And um, so we as an organization and OGC, we are realigning uh, the technology users and providers to work together um, identifying and addressing the requirements. So it's also a cost-sharing exercise, and Stefan um, will, yeah, will talk about how they participate in the OGC um, oh, innovation program. Um, I have to uh, change that. And it's a repeatable process, so we have run over 100 initiatives um, in the innovation program. Um, who of you know Luis Bermudez? Yeah, he's uh, our executive director for the standards program and the compliance program. So if you have questions about that, ask uh, Luis, or of course you can ask me and I connect you with Luis. Um, Luis is based in, in, in the US, so, and I think he participated in the last, uh, in, in the, he usually participates in the North American uh, Phos4G events. Good, standards program with the compliance program then the innovation program that feeds also results back to the standards program. And then, of course, it's all about market adoption. We need to talk about what we are doing because that's also good for the community. If you do something, of course, you want um, your results to be published, respectively the software, if you're a software developer, that the software is used. So we have a market and communication program. Um, we are writing blogs, uh, press releases, and we promote what our members are doing. And any gaps or enhancement that are identified, again, go back to the innovation program, and the renovation program then reports, so to say, back to the standards program. So this is a very, very brief 
um, the, the interaction between the OGC programs. Good, I have a few more slides on uh, what's new in 2019. So, so far, so clear. If there are any questions, uh, you know, we, we have time to discuss those. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I, I'd like to have more uh, interaction with you. So what's new in 2019, we, have, we had a very busy year. We have a new leadership in OGC. Nine standards have been approved, 30 engineering reports, that is the results that are the results of the innovation program activities. Uh, we have discussion papers and white papers published, and we have new domain working groups. And yeah, I, I want just to point out, we have Nadine Alame as a former colleague. She came back, returned to OGC as our new CEO. Um, very glad to have her. She's based also in the DC area. And Bart de la Tower, he is based um, outside of Antwerpen in Antwerp in, Brussels, in, in Belgium. And he's now our president. So we have also a leadership team that is um, partly in Europe, partly in, in North America. And um, yeah, Mark Reichert is still with OGC. That's our previous, uh, or my previous boss, still there. Um, yeah, new domain working groups recently um, initiated. I mentioned Earth Observation Exploitation Platform Domain Working Group. This is uh, it's a lot about the EO community in uh, the industry in Europe, um, but also, of course, connecting with other regions of the world. We have a statistical domain working group. We call them DWIGs. And uh, artificial intelligence and geoinformatics. It's uh, pretty new. It's, I think uh, we just published the, the charter. Then blockchain and distributed ledger technologies and portrayal. Here you get an idea what topics we are addressing in the innovation program. So it's from smart cities. We do a reference in an architecture pilot uh, in, in North America, a marine SDI concept, concept development studies, maritime limits and boundaries pilot. We work together with IHO, the International Hydrographic Organization, indoor mapping and navigation pilot, um, routing, Testbed 15 is uh, ongoing, and we plan some sprints um, on the OGC API activities. And if you want to learn more, there's again is a link where you can read about these initiatives. Open API, Open API, Open API. I, uh, you will hear about that later. Uh, one more slide. So we. The, the, the whole initiative started from a, from a joint working group between OGC and, the spatial, uh, and W3C, it's the spatial data on the web uh, working group. And um, the focus of the Open a API and Next Generation Standards is to focus on easing developer effort in today's app environment and getting content to the web um, so, and, for, and, and expanding the reuse. So I was, we were asked questions like, oh, what happens to the, to the OGC web services standards? They are still there um, because they are broadly and globally implemented. We will continue to support them, but on a, not on the level as we're doing, as we're doing it now. And uh, we see a lot of members uh, engaging in this topic, uh, the developer community is included, and then there are some ideas between OSGO and OGC um, how to, to, to go ahead on the topic. And one thing, just remember OGC API is a catalog, and uh, so that is uh, something to keep in mind for, for later. You might wonder, what is she talking about? Yeah, but you will see. So, if you want to get engaged or learn more or see how the OGC works, we have so-called technical committee meetings. This is when the members come together, work in the working groups, and um, yeah, it's also about networking. And here you have the, the list of upcoming events. We are in Canada in September, in Toulouse, in, also in, in, in Banff in Canada in, in, in September, in Toulouse in France in December, then Hong Kong in March, June, Montreal, and then September, Munich, 
Um, that's just the week before the Oktoberfest, so if you wanted to go to the Oktoberfest, make sure you be there a week earlier to, go to, to come to the OTC meeting. And how can you stay tuned? We have a blog, um, we have blogs on our, um, on our website and the last blogs are really, they look into the, you know, they describe the process behind OpenAPI. You can read about past OTC member meetings and uh, there's a lot of information there. So one of my usual last slide, I would say, stay curious and participate. Really avoid reinventing the wheel. If you have something just, um, you know, and then it's about interoperability, have a look at OTC, what we are doing, or work through the Foscus community to get in touch with us. Um, then interoperability and open standards help to sustain uh, investments. And, you know, I would say this uh, conference is really a success because we have so many people from, we have over a thousand people from, yeah, all around the globe, so key to success is um, co contribution and cooperation on international level. Good. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. So I'm moderating my own session, Latina. Now, we, we have now, you know, as, as I mentioned, we have uh, two more presentations here that relate to the OGC programs. Um, and already I want to, uh, Stefan, maybe you can come already on stage because Stefan Meisel from EOX, he will talk about uh, EOX's experience um, in the OGC innovation program. So, yeah, the schedule is we have five, five minutes to change, but if you have any questions, yes. My question is, how well implemented are uh, the standards that you supplied basically in the large industry or the OSGO? And uh, what kind of certification process do you have? So if somebody wants to get certificated that uh, they are not following the standards, how should they do it? So if I, if I understood correctly, the question is, how do you get certified? Yeah? Okay. Um, so we have, a, we have a process, we have a, on our website, there is the OTC compliance test. This test is run by the team engine. And if you have a software that is implementing OTC standards, you can do this test, there's no cost um, if, if you want to uh, test things out. And uh, if you pass the test, you know, there are certain, certain questions or certain uh, technical aspects the software need to, to uh, uh, fulfill. If you pass them 100%, um, you, you get a, the result to say, okay, you are fully compliant. And then if you want to have the logo, the logo I showed uh, um, on, on one of the slides, that comes with a cost. Um, but to understand if your software is uh, OGC compliant or not, you don't have to pay anything. And the process is, uh, is a matter of 24 hours, 48 hours. It's really a fast process. And the result you, 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 give, you, you get back is also showing where, if, if you fail in, in the one or uh, other aspect, it gives you also back where you fail, so you can um, work on that. Maybe to add, to add one aspect, there is a really, the, if you go to the OTC page, there's a really long list of software that's implementing stuff, and there is uh, two different types of, so you can say, I'm implementing it, so you can just register you for free, this doesn't cost anything, only when you need the certified, when you have, want to have this uh, certified label, that's when the, the fee comes into play. But there is a, like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know the percentage, but it's a really long list of implementing software already as well there. Yeah. Question. Uh, what's the budget of the organization? Oh. 
Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the budget. I can tell you how we are financed. So we have over 500 member, 530 member organizations. They are paying a membership fee. So just to give you an idea, university in Europe pays 500 US dollar per year. A government agency, 4,800 US dollars. Um, small company, 2,400 US dollars. But then we have technical members. They pay 12,000 US dollars, and we have principal members, they pay 55,000 US, uh, 60,000 US dollars. Uh, and strategic members, they have a strategic interest, they pay, um, they pay more. So this is how the money comes in uh, on the membership side. And the other revenue is uh, the innovation program I mentioned. So um, if a sponsor, has interest, uh, for example, take the, the routing pilot. Uh, they say, well, we are interested in doing that, and here is amount X, um, you know, do something with it. We, as OGC staff, we are looking for more sponsors um, to, to, to bring more money together. And this money then goes to the members that are working in this pilot. So in testbed, I don't, I think the last OGC testbeds, these are re really the major testbeds, they, they have always been between 1.8 and, and, and 3 million US dollars, and the money goes to the participants, which are members, but um, for example, if you, we have an open call usually for the uh, test bits, and if there are topics that are of interest for you, you can apply, even if you're not a member. And if the sponsor said, wow, this, in, this um, offered solution or, or looks really interesting, um, I would like to, to work together with them, um, then you have to become an OGC member, but this is really, you know, if you're a small company, uh, given the amount, so it's, uh, this is how, how our, the budget works. Maybe worth mentioning for the test budget as well, you said this 1.8 to 3 million, and this is typically then doubled because it's a cost sharing model. So you typically, a typical share would be that 50% of your cost is covered from the sponsors, but you are also contributing 50% of the yeah. cost when participating. So in-kind contribution or whatever. Good. Thanks.